Well, it's getting very, very bad right now. And, you know, if you're a Bible-reading person, you want to really get frightened, you can start talking about Armageddon. But the story came out moments ago on Drudge Report. It's linked now from the Times Online out of England from January 2nd, 09. It just went up. Gaza rockets put Israel's nuclear plant in battle zone. They're, co- they're talking about the top-secret nuclear facility at Dimona. And the Israelis are concerned that... If the rockets or a rocket should hit <clears throat> a nuclear facility in Demona, there could be a nuclear uh, reaction, and certainly millions of people could die, hundreds of thousands of people, many of whom will be Palestinians, many of whom will be Arabs. After all, uh, a nuke doesn't distinguish based upon race. And this is getting to a point where the, the superpowers are going to have to do something here. Obama is going to have to, to step in. Now, he, now you know, people are saying the left is mad at Obama because they say he hasn't said anything. And I said to you last week, of course he's speaking. He's speaking volumes through his silence. He has given the green light to the Israelis for this air campaign for many reasons. The main thing is, is he wants this ended before he takes office in January. Uh, he wants it ended. So he gave Israel the green light. I love the left is so, so naive. They think he, he doesn't know any, he doesn't know what to do. If you actually believe this is because Bush, you're crazy. Bush constrained Israel all of these years. Bush, Bush's sympathies were with the Saudis. You could say Bush was, in essence, uh, controlled by the Saudis. And you might argue the opposite is true with Obama, because the Democrats have always been closer to Israel than the Republicans. By and large, the Democrat Party is much closer to Israel than the Republicans have been. I mean, just study politics. So Obama, whether you like his politics or not is irrelevant, is a very bright man. And he can read the tea leaves. And he says to the Israelis, I'm sure he said, go ahead. This was a joint decision by the Bush administration and the Democratic administration for the Israelis to take out the Hamas leadership. Since the Jews are hated anyway, And since the world condemns Israel anyway, they may as well go and kill all of them right now. And I say all of them, I mean the leadership of the snake. That's what they're going to do. My guess is Israel will not stop. That the world will try to stop them, but they will not stop. That's what I think is going to happen. And uh, whether it's true or not is almost irrelevant. History is very interesting. And you have to read a Psalm of David sometimes in moments like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul, he guardeth me in straight paths for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This Psalm of David was at one time read to the troops in the United States of America before they went into battle, before the degenerate witches and psychopathic perverts took over the U.S. military from the highest level down. Before the men went into battle, they were anointed by priests with the Psalm of David. They were calmed by the Bible before they went into battle. Today, today, our fighting men do not even have this comfort. Instead, they have degeneracy. I'll be right back. It's sure, and if the Jews walked into a gas chamber, they'd endorse that too. Well, the if Jews, the Jews walked into a gas chamber, they'd say, "Good Jew." The, the only good Jew is a dead Jew. It doesn't matter. What, look, it doesn't matter what you and I say. It's a sovereign nation. It's not disappearing. The whole thing is built upon jealousy. Can you explain to me why the other Arab nations live in such destitution? You're going to blame it all on the Jews? Well, if, if, you, if you check, it's kind of weird. Now. Why is it? Why is it that the average Egyptian is impoverished? Why is it that the average Saudi is impoverished and there's a, a princely class? Why is it that wherever you go in the Islamic world, there's a ruling class and then there's a class of slaves? And, and couldn't it be possible 
Couldn't it be possible that this whole thing is built upon the jealousy, the fact that the Jews took a desert and turned it into a garden of Eden, and they showed that the people who had occupied the area before them for well over 2,000 years after the Jews were thrown out uh, by the Romans did nothing with it but leave it as a wasteland, and they're jealous of the fact of what Israel created in, in such a short period of time? It can't all be based upon thievery and muggery and, and homicide. Well, Michael, you just you said, you said it. They took. They took. You said it with your own mouth. They took someone else's land, and that's going to radicalize uh, people who have a grudge, you know? So, well, I mean, now let's go into the issue of who took what. Let's start with facts. You're now going to deny, deny that the Jews were there in biblical times? The, the land that the Jews took in 1967 is... Hold it. I asked you a question, and you're not answering it. Now, you're going back to 1967. Let's go back to the year 67 A.D. When, when were the Jews thrown out of their homeland, and by whom? I think it was around 70 A.D., the, the, fall, the destruction of the Second Temple, uh, when Titus... Uh, well, you're pretty good. That's why I said, I said A.D. 67. You're pretty sharp. So you know more than you let on to. Uh, the problem is your conclusions are faulty, for one reason. I, too, would say let's gladly encourage the Israelis to give back the West Bank to the poor, impoverished Palestinians. But let's start with even Judea and Samaria. Can you name some major cities in those territories, which you call the West Bank, which I call Judea and Samaria, which have been occupied by Jews since biblical times? Name two cities. Haifa? No, come on now. Stop it. Now, now, you, now you're groping. I'm not really uh, privy to uh, what's going on in Israel because I'm not there. But uh, what I'll say is that... Well, wait a I... minute. You are an expert on Israel. You just said if they gave back the territories they allegedly captured in 67... Uh, there would be peace on earth and goodwill to man. The uh, Islamists in the Philippines would lay down their swords. The Islamists uh, in, in India would lay down their swords. And all of the other 13 places where Islamists are killing <clears throat> people would all be at peace, whether it be in the African continent or any other continent. The Islamists would be at peace if only the Jews would, would do what you say. You know that that's not true. Well, I'm saying that my church, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, says that Israel should return the land, every other church, and uh, with the exception of the evangelical Christians, that they, they, they don't have any love for Israel or the Jews. They, they just want the Jews to convert to uh, Christianity. And, well, uh, I've heard that lie about the evangelicals over and over again, and I resent it, frankly. I resent it very deeply. That even the, the most devout supporters of Israel are the evangelical Christians, and yet even they are put down by people like you. And you question their motives, like as though you know their motives better than they do. Could it be that they just simply have a love for the Jewish people? That they have no devious plan in mind for Jews in the end of days? They also have uh, irrational interpretations. Well, let's, let's go to the liberal churches you just mentioned, all these liberal wings of the churches. They also believe in gay marriage, don't they? No, the, the Methodist Yes, church. they do. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. The mainstream Protestant churches all believe in homosexual marriage. You're going to tell me that that's supported by biblical, uh, biblical edict? Well, the Roman Catholic Church doesn't believe in it, and that's my church, and they say Israel should return the land, and I think that... Well, let them say all they want. I could say the Vatican should give back the land for the people they stole it from. Why doesn't the Vatican give back the gold that they took from other people? That's what football feels. Well, why do they live so well in the Vatican? Where do they get the money from? You want me to go into the Catholic Church of the Vatican? We can do that, too. How can they hoodwink so many millions of poor, impoverished people in the third world into believing they're going to be saved if they send their money to Rome? You want to talk about that? You think they'll, that's fair? They'll be saved if they put their trust in Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, Jesus Christ is wonderful as long as they send their money to the, to the, to the priest to, uh, to go to the third world. And Milan. I know too many poor Latino women here who clean houses and kick money up to the church and those bums go and molest boys in the third world. So don't tell me how pure and holy your church is. A very small percentage of priests have engaged in that, but I can see That's that. correct. It's about 3%. That is absolutely correct. It's about 3%. You're 100% right. Because the church uh, endorses Israel, you're, you're going to uh, try That's to... That's right. But if only the Jews would give up the West Bank, everybody would be dancing in a peace, in a peace parade. Well, All right, my that. friend. Have a nice day. I'll be right back. Savage. Las Vegas, Bill, you're on the Savage Nation. I wanted to thank you for coming in, for showing up and being present and accounted for when, when you know, I served in the Air Force and the Army, both two branches. One important thing you learn in the military and that is, number one, you lead by example. And you're doing that 
for the industry, for radio. Well, hey, you know, just because it's... I know, everyone's off, so they're off. There's a war going on, and they're still off. Why are they not on the air today? 